you just kind of want like a little quirky mystery slasher, it's not going to change your life. It's not going <laughs> to yeah. be the best movie you've ever seen in your life. Especially if you want to dig into Bill Paxton's filmography, it's kind of a must watch. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten's Trash or Treasure, but before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we're drinking Seven Deadly Sins Red Ale. Aha! Uh -huh. Today we're going to bring to you a, a very highly requested movie. Uh, people have been asking us to do this one for quite some time. It's 1983's Mortuary. This movie is directed by Howard Avedis, and he mostly did 70s erotic thrillers and <laughs> sexploitation movies. This movie stars Christopher George, who is in some pretty famous Italian horror movies, is in Pieces, which we covered. Yeah. And City of the Living Dead. It also stars Linda Day George, who's also in Pieces. Bastard! <laughs> Bastard! Bastard! <laughs> and Bill Paxton's in this, and well, this is one of his first movies, but he went on to do some great things like Near Dark, mm -hmm. which we covered. Yep. He was in Aliens. <laughs> We're fucked! The fuck are we gonna do? He was in The Terminator. Yeah. And well, tons of other things. Weird Science, Twister, the list goes on. Sadly, he passed away pretty young. So Mortuary starts off, we see this like car pull up to this mansion and there's this old guy sitting there he's all enjoying his evening he's smoking and he has like his drink and everything the decanters there <laughs> man that's yeah. that's what i call an afternoon at the pool <laughs> that's living planned to enjoy himself <laughs> and what does he get a fucking baseball bat <laughs> right to the back right in the face and then on like the top of his head and he fucking just goes down <laughs> into the pool <laughs> he wasn't planning on that, that's for sure. Two friends, Greg and Josh, and they pull up to this like huge warehouse. The boss owes me money, like I've been washing bodies for him and he hasn't paid me. So I'm gonna steal these tires. It just so happens that this is the warehouse to the mortuary that he's been working at, and the boss just fired him too. So he owes him all that fucking money and back shit. pay. <laughs> yeah. Josh all has the tires already, he's all rolling them. But they hear all these noises and they go to investigate, look through this window and they see like this weird ritual going on with these people in these cloaks and everything and they're like chanting and walking around in a circle. This ritual is kind of being led by Josh's boss, his former boss now. So Josh kind of leaves and he hears a noise over by these caskets and he goes over and he looks and he lifts the lid off of this casket and there's a dead body there, a dead woman. All of a sudden, there's this figure in a black cloak and a white face that stabs him with this embalming tool. Blood starts coming out the other end of the tube. Yeah, it's really cool. Greg, who's watching this, this ceremony going on, he hears squealing and he runs off to the window and he sees his van drive off. So he naturally figures that it's Josh driving and he kind of pulled a fast one on him. Greg grabs his girlfriend, Christy, and they kind of start going around to like the you know, all the little haunts where he figures Josh is going to be. And they go to like the roller rink, the disco roller yeah. rink. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Skating dancing? plus, it's called. <laughs> yeah. Skating plus what? <laughs> it's a bargain. Yeah. Greg can't find Josh anywhere and everybody kind of has these suggestions, but nobody's really seen him. The next day at school, they kind of run into this guy named Paul, son of the boss who was running that sick ritual thing. And he's kind of got this little thing for Christy and he kind of comes up to her and says, Hey Christy, I got this new Mozart album. Can I come over and we can listen to it together? <laughs> <It's> like, Mozart? <laughs> who gives a shit about Mozart? Soon after that, we see Christy starting to drive home all of a sudden she starts getting chased by this black car and that night when Christy tries sleeping she's having a really hard time she starts having nightmares and she gets up and she actually starts sleepwalking through the house and she kinda actually leaves the house and starts walking the grounds and the whole time she's outside she's getting stalked by somebody in that black cloak she falls into the pool but the whole ordeal wakes Christy up so Christy starts explaining to her boyfriend, Greg, all this weird stuff that's been happening to her. And 
they're in the cemetery because of visit her dad, who is actually the guy who died in the beginning of the movie. <laughs> yep. They run into Paul there, and he's visiting his mom, who had recently died. Mm -hmm. He's all kind of happy and like, yeah. "Hey, Kirsty, <laughs> how's it going?" And like, as he gives her some flowers that he was gonna give to his mom's grave, you know. <laughs> he all runs off. Yeah. Too. <laughs> he's all prancing <laughs> and skipping. <laughs> Never seen someone skip through a cemetery before. <laughs> that night, they're trying to get all hot and heavy. And Christy's <laughs> mom has gone out, and they have the house to themselves, and they start kissing, and the lights go off. Mm. And the lights come back on, and there's all this disco music yeah. playing. <laughs> And you're like, what? And then the lights go off again. And this happens a bunch of times where the lights keep going off and on, the power off and on. So Greg tells Christy he's been keeping a secret from her and that's that one of the women he saw in this ritual was her mom. So they go to the mortuary to see what the hell's going on here and they see the boss, Hank Andrews, and her mom, Christy's mom, holding the seance. Yeah, some sick seance. Some cheesy seance <laughs> with these people, you know, calling the spirits forward and the table starts moving and they're like, well, I guess they're just scamming people with yeah. this thing? It's, it's all gonna... a bunch of horse <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On their way out, they bump into Paul. Like, oh, geez, like, they're not supposed to be there, so they hightail it out. They go back to Christie's place and they again try to get a little hot and yeah. heavy again. Yeah. And they're getting a little bit further. They're all yeah. naked and everything. <laughs> yeah. They're by the fireplace. And then you see this cloaked figure peeking through the windows and spying on them and everything. And Christy's like, oh, this isn't right. No, no, this isn't <laughs> right. And then the poor uh, Greg cock blocked again. <laughs> you ball breaking tees. He takes it pretty well, though, considering. Yeah. So she goes up to bed and he leaves. That night she starts having more nightmares about her dad being killed, starts sleepwalking again. And she goes to the window in the kitchen and comes face to face with this cloaked figure. The saying, oh, Christy, come outside. I want to touch you. Ooh. Christy, let me in. Let me in. And then the lights come on. Her mom found her sleepwalking. And they all go back to bed. And then that cloaked figure comes into the mom's room, yeah. kills her with that embalming tool. Yeah. And then Christy's left alone in the house all by herself with this cloaked figure. And that's where we're going to end the plot. So if you want to see what happens, keep watching this review because we are going to spoil it for you. Yeah. We yeah. kind of have to, to do a proper review. So that's your warning. That'll bring us to the treasure of this movie. First and foremost, we've got to mention the music. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on too, right? You have an orchestral score too. There's a lot of strings and stuff and it's very eerie and sort of haunting too. Then you've also got the, uh, the sort of the synth side of it, right? When it picks up, when the killings start and stuff like that. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need that in a horror movie. Yeah. The in, in an 80s horror movie, you need dare. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that really shines in this movie, I find. Mm -hmm. And this movie does look great. Like, it's it's shot very well. The settings are great, you know, especially Christie's house yeah. is a fantastic setting. I just love the look of that house. And it lends itself to being stalked in because all the windows and everything, you're always like, ah, there's so many windows. You're always, who's out there? Yeah. Well, where's the guy? Where is he peering through, you know? Yeah, it's perfect for a chase scene, too, because yeah. the way the house is kind of cut up, too, yeah. it's like you can't, you can get stuck in a room easily. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's hard to get out of it. And the way the uh, the movie's lit, too, is very neat. It's, it's, mm. it's very dark, and there's lots of shadows, which helps because you're always looking in the shadows for the killer. Yeah. Where is he hiding? Spot his white face. Yeah, always looking for that white face, and they do a great job of, of keeping you... You know, he's close by. Where yep. is he? Some of the settings here really kind of date the movie too. Yeah, like the, the roller rink yeah, and all yeah, that kind of plus. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> skating plus with all the disco music. Yeah. And Everybody wearing the super short shorts. Yeah. The suspense and the, the mystery to this movie is really good too. It does a really good job of slowly building the suspense. And so you're always wondering who the killer might be, and then that's where the mystery takes shape too. And the way they set the stage for the mystery is really good. They, they really take their time to like put everything in its place so you know who all the players in the game are, so to speak. Yeah. You get a bit of everyone's backstory. So th that all helps build the suspense too, because mm -hmm. you're always waiting for the next thing to happen, the next 
clue to be unveiled, right? This movie has a really cool twist ending. There's kind of two twists to it if you want to add the reveal in, too, on top yeah. of that. But the last split second payoff. Yeah. Which is really good. Which does relate to, in the beginning of the movie, when he stumbles upon the body in the casket, it harks back to that. And, mm -hmm. it, and you kind of have to watch the movie twice to catch that, almost. Because mm -hmm. you kind of forget about it by the time you get to the ending. And the killer in this movie is neat too, like his look mm -hmm. is neat. You know, the cloak with the, the white face, which works great in the shadows, as we mentioned. That yep. white face, kind of like a Michael Myers almost, where it does a great job of popping out in the darkness and building contrast in the shadows. Yeah, he's kind of got a bit of a Grim Reaper sort of look to him, right? Yeah. Which plays into the mortuary yeah. kind of death. And he's got his specific killing tool, which has to do with the mortuary, mm -hmm. which is the, the embalming tube or whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. Let's get the hell back to the embalming room. Well, let's get the hell back to the embalming room then, come on. There's a lot of backstory, right, with the killer, which lends itself to the whole reason why he's killing, which is really good. Which brings us now to the trash of mortuary, and it's also the killer in the way that it's revealed, it's revealed really too early mm -hmm. in the movie. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, it's, well, really? Like, yeah. did this early? <laughs> now we know. It's yeah. like, fuck, well, the mystery's dead. That's it. So that scene where she runs into the killer at the glass window in the kitchen, you clearly see that it's Bill Paxson's character. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's a little early to kind of give it away. But then later on in the movie, she gets attacked by the killer, and the killer is wearing a mask that she takes off and reveals it's Bill Paxton. Yeah. So what's the point in that reveal when yeah. it's already been revealed earlier? I think I think they fucked up. It's like, did they fuck up and yeah. like they forgot to put the mask on him when they shot that scene through the window? Yeah. But <laughs> also, though, yeah, it's like they fucked up visually, but also with him talking where he's saying, you know, let me in. Bill Paxton has a pretty distinct voice. And cadence. Yeah, yeah, and so you know it's him. You don't even have to see him. Yeah. It's like, they shouldn't have had him talk at all. Just, he, you know, keep maybe half his face hidden and have him do something creepy. And yeah. that's it. There, yeah. You know? So they really blew their load with the reveal too early. And they, and why there was two reveals is very questionable. Yeah, yeah. It's really too bad, you know, because <laughs> yeah. it's like, ah, oh, like, and it's kind of anticlimactic the way that happens in the window. It's like, mm -hmm. it's way better if you do the, it's cliche, but, you know, rip off the mask and it's him. It's yeah. cliche, but it's more dramatic than just, like, seeing him in the window. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> as the viewer, you get more of a payoff that way, yeah, you know. Yeah. It's like, I don't really care if it's cliche. It's... You're invested into the whole movie, and it's yeah. like, get fucking blow your load halfway through. It's like, yeah. ah. And the pacing tends to drag in this movie, too. Uh, it gets a little too bogged down with the characters and all the kind of menial stuff that they're doing, right? They do a good job on the character development, but they delve too far into it, and they, they just follow them yeah. around too much. It's like, ah. Yeah. You know, yeah, it they, slows the movie down. It, it does. Like, it's it's, it's funny because it, they do do a great job of building the mystery. But there should be more things plopped in there in between all that story stuff to kind of give you a bit of a... Get get your blood going a bit, you know? A few more kills or whatnot. Yeah. Just something to kind of break up the... Oh, here they are at her house again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, here they are at the sheriff's place again. They're just kind of going place to place talking. Yeah, yeah. And they didn't, I found they didn't um, lead into enough red herrings yeah. either. They didn't really have anything besides possibly the dad being a, another possible killer. It's yeah. Like, they should have had another two or three people that it yeah. could have been. Yeah, there's not nearly enough suspects in this. It's pretty obvious it's either Paul or his dad. Yeah, yeah. And then when you see how weird Paul is, it's pretty obvious it's Paul. Yeah. And then when you see him in the window, it's like, well... There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I would have hoped that it was his dad instead yeah. then, right? Yeah. For a bit of just to give us something extra. There is a really low body count in this movie for what is kind of a slasher. Like, mm -hmm. the movie's a little confused almost. Like, is it a mystery or is it a slasher? 
and it kind of doesn't really do a good job of balancing both of those. There's not enough slasher elements, like a few more kills, a bit more of a higher body count. Yeah. Would have been really welcome in this, mm -hmm. especially like we said to kind of break up the monotony of the the mystery and the story. You don't get much of a payoff with the kills, right? So there aren't aren't enough of them, and then the kills themselves are kind of lackluster. All he really does is stab with that thing. Yeah, it would have been nice, like. You got an entire array of embalming tools. Yeah. Use them. Yeah, use them all. Yeah, I mean, not just that fucking hose yeah. thing. Well, let's get the hell back to the embalming room then. Come on. This isn't necessarily trash, but it kind of rides the line between the two is the acting in this movie. It's mm -hmm. kind of, it's okay. It's <laughs> passable. Bill Paxton kind of steals the show a bit as far as obviously he's the, the strongest of the bunch. Mm -hmm. But even he's a little, you can tell he's a little green? Yeah. I guess you can say. There's some scenes where it kind of is a little bit, you know, awkward. Yeah. Or... But you can tell that there's something there. You can tell, okay, this guy is going to go places. Yeah. Even though he seems a little kind of inexperienced at this point. It could just be that he's playing it quirky. It is a quirky character, yeah. so it's kind of hard hard to tell. I mean, look, his next movie was Terminator, right? Yeah. So, not that it was a huge part. Got his ass beat down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but still. Down to the wire here. Mortuary. Trash or treasure? I think it's treasure. I'll definitely watch it again. It was still fun and enjoyable. I think it's treasure, too. Even though it's kind of close. It's a close call. Cool. I likened it to... When you you got dirty clothes and you, you're not quite dirty enough to throw in the hamper and you kind of leave it half hanging in, half out yeah. to maybe use later. That's <laughs> yeah. kind of what this movie is. <laughs> or you're like your wang hanging half in and <laughs> <laughs> To maybe use later. <laughs> Whatever that <Yeah>. means. <laughs> kind of want like a little quirky mystery slasher it's not gonna change your life it's not gonna <laughs> yeah. be the best movie you've ever seen in your life especially if you want to dig into bill paxton's filmography it's kind of a must watch yeah yeah it's fun and you know it's definitely a movie that has rewatchability. i yeah. would say you know it's not like one of those throwaway movies where you'll never it's like nah there's nothing redeeming about this nah this has some good qualities to it yeah so until next time keep drinking